Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, you are welcome in this class. The topic of this lecture is Introduction to Organic Farming. The learning objectives are to understand the meaning, the definition, purpose and need of organic farming, understand the four pillars including standards, certification, production technology and marketing of organic products and third objective is to study the constraints employment opportunities and impacts of organic farming. Uh, see some glossary, polyculture, a field or coping system with multiple interacting crops or pertaining to such a field or coping system, means the field or soil in which you are growing two or three or more uh, different kind of crops is your polyculture. Buffer zone. An area located between a certified production operation or portion of a production operation and an adjacent land area that is not maintained under organic management. Means this is just an area between organic and conventional farm so that mixing cannot happen. Mixing means the animals or the machines which are working in the non-organic area should not go easily into the organic area. So, it is just kind of isolation of organic farm and conventional farm. Crop rotation, the plant sequence of growing different crops in the same field over a fixed period of time and it is opposite of the continuous cropping, monoculture where you grow one kind of crop year after year. Smoother crop, an interseeded crop sown with the intent of smoothing weeds or weed suppressive cover crop grown alone. Heavy metals, natural elements with high atomic mass and their high density. Density may be at least 5 gram per cubic centimeter or higher. Example of heavy metals are cadmium, cobalt, chromium, copper, iron, mercury, manganese, molybdenum, lead and zinc. Soil organic matter. The organic fraction of the soil including plant, animal and microbial residues in various stages of decomposition, biomass of soil microorganism and substances produced by plant roots and other soil organisms. They all are part of soil organic matter and it has very important role particularly in organic farming. Soil amendment, substances other than fertilizers for example, lime, sulfur, gypsum and sawdust used to alter the chemical or physical properties of a soil. So, such materials are called as soil amendment. Soil carbon sequestration, the process by which carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is converted to organic carbon by photosynthesis and the decomposition of that plant carbon into organic matter stored in the soil. So, that is carbon sequestration and mostly it is stored in the form of humus. Crop waste, organic materials left in field or orchard after the harvest of crops. For example, it may be stalks, stubbles, leaves and seed pods. Litter, loose organic debris may be leaves or twigs on the surface of earth consisting of freshly fallen or slightly decomposed organic materials. Now see before going into the details of organic farming, let us see what are the options or methods of farming or methods of agriculture that are common in the country. So for example, there may be one kind of farming which is modern farming or conventional farming and sometimes people call it chemical farming and before people used to call it industrial farming. So, it is in the same reference of chemical farming and also there may be integrated crop management. Integrated crop management is a kind of management or crop production 
where the integrated approaches are adopted by the farmers like integrated pest management, integrated disease management, integrated nutrient management. The other form of farming can be organic agriculture or organic farming or organic systems. So organic systems, you, here you do not use any chemical, any pesticide, any artificial things. So in case of modern farming or modern crop production or agriculture, you use lot of chemicals. However, in organic farming, which is another extreme, you do not use any chemicals, any artificial or synthetically produced pesticides. But in between these two, there lies an approach which is known as integrated crop management. So these are the three important uh, uh, methods of farming or crop production. Now see general consequences of conventional farming. Why do we want organic farming? Why there is need to go for organic farming? So there are many reasons. For example, decline in factor productivity. Decline in factor productivity means uh, your factors of production are land, labor, capital and management. For example, you are using some inputs which are purchased by the capital. See fertilizer you are using. 25 or 30 years before, 1 kg nitrogen used to give about 30 to 35 kg grain of rice. But now 1 kg nitrogen gives you hardly 15 to 20 or 25 kg grain of rice. That means to get the same level of grain yield, you need to double the fertilizer rate. So this is decline in factor productivity means the producing, producing capacity of the factor has declined. And in this case, there may be one reason, one major cause that is reduced soil health or reduced soil fertility can lead to decline in factor productivity. And finally, your cost of production is going to increase. And that will result in declining returns or profit from the farming. Next is unsafe food or pesticides. So many times pesticides are coming to our food and we can notice that even the banned pesticides like DDT or BSC have come up, have been detected above the permissible limit in many food items. And there are reports that mother's milk is also having pesticide residue. What will happen to a child who is, who is drinking, who is using his mother's milk? He will get a lot of pesticide into his body. So finally, you will get more diseases in human beings. So unsafe food, it is there. So in this case, major cause are use of banned and other pesticides and their residues are beyond the permissible limit. Nitrates and heavy metal contamination is also there observed. And what are the consequences if your uh, food is unsafe? So declining biological health of soil because you have used many pesticides into the soil. So they will not be harmful only to human beings, but they will be harmful to the organism which are living in the soil. So their activity will decline and reduce health of animals and human. Or overall, the, the, the quality of the food or safety of the food is declined. Reduce nutritional quality. If you take conventional food, their quality is declining day by day and mainly because of climate change. Due to climate change, carbon dioxide concentration in the environment is increasing and therefore you will get more non-nitrogenous compound in the plant and nitrogen or protein in the uh, plant foods or plant will get diluted. So therefore concentration of minerals and nutrients may decline because of increased carbon dioxide uh, concentration in the atmosphere. So that way our nutritional quality of the food is declining. There are a good number of reports where it is suggested that mineral percentage, protein percentage in Indian food is declining. To get the same level of nutrients, same level of vitamins, proteins, we need to eat uh, more food. Hence, there are some reports from medical science that out of 10, 7 Indians have poor muscles. Poor muscle health means they are not getting enough protein. Protein malnutrition is there. So it will result in reduced immunity and increased incidence of diseases in animals and humans. Recently, we were suffering from Corona pandemic or COVID-19. In that case also, there was big suggestion by some people, let us get some organic food because it contains more antioxidants and it can improve your immunity system. Therefore, 
incidence of disease can be managed by organic food. So it was in news also. So there may be some differences in, let us now see the differences in conventional farming and organic farming. So there are many, many bases on which we can distinguish, we can, we can differentiate organic farming and conventional farming. In the first column you have particular, then conventional farming and organic farming. So there is difference in the farm inputs. In case of conventional farming, you use mostly chemicals, fertilizers, pesticide or synthetic products. However, in organic farming, normally natural products are used on farm resources or inputs such as farmyard manure, compost, etc. are used to supply the nutrients. Cropping system, in case of conventional farming, it is mostly one crop followed means one kind of rotation is repeated year after year like sugarcane wheat, rice wheat or maize wheat. So they are repeated year after year. The diversification is minimized in the conventional farming system. However, in organic farming, crop emphasis is given on diversification of the crops and cropping systems. Supply of nutrients to crops. So in conventional system, you are totally dependent upon the chemical fertilizers for the supply of nutrients. However, in organic farming, naturally, you have other sources of nutrients like organic manures, green manure, bulky manures like farmyard manure, vermicompost, biofertilizer. There are a number of options to supply nutrients in organic farming. Insect pests, plant disease and weed control. In conventional farming, farmers are depending upon the synthetic pesticide or chemicals fungicide or herbicides to control weeds. However, in organic farming, such chemicals or pesticides are not allowed. But some alternate, alternative strategies are followed to manage insect pests and diseases which are environment friendly. And productivity is generally higher in the conventional farming system. In organic farming system, productivity is not that high, particularly in the initial few years. So initially, the productivity may be uh, 10 to 35 percent lower than the conventional. But after 6-7 years, one can get similar productivity in organic farming also. There are some more points of differences in conventional and organic farming. Let us see them. Soil health, it deteriorates over time because you are mostly using chemical fertilizer which can affect the biological fertility of the soil. And in organic farming, definitely your soil health Soil fertility improves because you are increasing organic matter in the soil and organic matter is the main material in soil that can lead to improvement in soil physical, chemical and biological properties. Aerial and soil biodiversity. So aerial and soil biodiversity just kindly make correction in this. In conventional farming it reduced, it reduces and in organic farming it increases. Food safety and quality, definitely your conventional food are not safe because many times they may have pesticide and however in organic farming uh, it is not likely to have any pesticide residues in the food. Environment, the conventional farming is supposed to pollute the environment particularly when we use pesticides or fertilizer, however organic farming is environment friendly approach. Energy input comparatively more because you need lot of plowing, lot of fertilizer, lot of pesticides. So energy use is high in conventional farming or chemical farming and it is less in organic farming. And then income, income is comparatively less in conventional farming and many studies suggest that there is about 25 to 30 percent higher uh, farm profits in organic farming. Genetically modified seeds are generally uh, allowed in organic in conventional farming in some cases gm crops have been allowed but in organic farming gm crops have not been allowed still no country allows gm crops in organic farming so some studies suggested that gm crops are not good for the environment they are not good for the soil they can lead to reduce uh, diversity of organism in the soil and also there was one study on rats by Seralini from France and he found that this use of GM crops or use of glyphosate herbicide led to cancer in, in, in rats, in rats. Therefore, uh, the safety of GM crops is still doubtful. However, some people say that they are good, 
but there is no settlement, there is no final verdict on this subject. Now let us see some definitions of organic agriculture. Organic products are grown under a system of agriculture without the use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides with an environmentally and socially responsible approach. So this includes your socially responsible approach. It is not just production, it also includes some social issues. It preserves the reproductive and regenerative capacity of the soil, good plant nutrition and sound soil management produces nutritious food rich in vitality which has resistance to diseases. So this definition is given by APIDA. It means that organic farming is genuinely an, uh, an holistic approach which takes in, into consideration all the components of the farming, whether it is soil, whether it is plant, whether it is your human beings, whosoever is there, nobody should be unhappy. Everybody needs to be happy. That is your true organic agriculture. Another definition from IFOM. IFOM is International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movement 2013. Its head office is in Germany, Bonn. Organic agriculture is a production system that sustains the health of soils, ecosystems and people. So first thing is that organic farming will result in the uh, sustain, sustainability of soil health, ecosystem and also people. Second important aspect is that it relies on ecological processes, means natural processes, biodiversity and cycles adapted to local conditions rather than use of inputs with adverse effect. It does not use any input that will have adverse effect on soil, on plant, on human beings or on ecosystem. That is a complete definition of organic farming. Now there are a lot of variants of organic farming across the world and particularly in India people now have lot of interest in organic farming and they want to develop their own kind of organic farming. So therefore, there are a lot of uh, new terms and new things in organic farming. I would just name the kind of farming and person who proposed it or who was proponent of that particular kind of or variant of organic farming. So definitely now we have modern organic farming that is uh, started by Sir Albert Howard. He was an English and he was posted in India. Uh, in Bengal, initially in Bengal, then he came to Madhya Pradesh and where he developed indoor process of composting. So he was a promoter of organic farming in India, in Europe and in America also. Uh, now bi Biodynamic Agriculture by Rudolf Steiner, 1924, Permaculture by Australian biologist Bill Mollison and his student David Holmgren in 1970s, Natural Farming by Fukuoka. Fukuoka, it is also known as Fukuoka farming in Japan. It was also famous in his time. Agroecological farming, agroecological agriculture, some western countries like France or Germany, they call organic farming as agroecological farming. Sustainable yogic culture, in India we have one sect that is Brahma Kumari, they call organic farming as sustainable yogic agriculture. They combine yogi uh, agriculture or organic agriculture with yoga, then it becomes yogic agriculture. And students should remember that there is practically no difference in agriculture or farming. You can use either of these words, whether you call organic farming or you can also call agriculture, ag organic agriculture. It does not make any difference. Next is your homeopathic, homeopathic farming or agricultural Homeopathy, it was given by Henman in 1755 to 1843. Homa farming, Agnihotra, it is also given by some people in East India or Eastern parts of the country. Homa farming, but uh, something is need, more needs to be uh, done to understand these kind of claims. Vedic Kheti, Rishi Kirshi, cow based organic farming or Go Mata Kheti, Vaishnav Kheti, Ahinsa Kheti, Shiv Yog. Loki Kheti, there are different names and different people who proposed it. And the latest edition was Zero Budget Natural Farming, Subhash Palekar. And Low Budget, later on he changed the name to Low Budget Natural Farming and Low Cost Organic Farming. So he is still uh, uh, 
angry at people that why you are not accepting my zero budget natural farming. However, ICAR, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, and most of the agricultural universities have rejected his idea. The idea does not have any scientific basis. Now, let us see principles of organic farming given by IFOM in 2012. And there are four principles. And a student can remember these principles by remembering, uh, remembering the acronym CHEF, C-H-E-F. You can remember this acronym and you will remember the principles of organic farming. In CHEF, C stands for, means principles of, principle of care, principle of health, principle of ecology, and F for principle of fairness. So there are four principles. Principle of health means there should be health of everyone. Health of soil, health of plant, and health of animals, health of human beings, health of microbes who are living in air or soil. Means everyone should have good health. That is the first principle of organic farming. Second is principle of ecology. Should be based on living ecological systems and cycle. Means we should exploit, we should use to the extent possible the natural cycles. Principle of fairness. Should be built on relationship that ensure fairness with regard to common environment and life opportunities and fair and just environment for people to live in. See, this point must be underlined. Fair and just environment for people to live in. People who are working, who are associated with organic farming, they should get good quality of life. There should not be any exploitation of those people and they should be happy. I can give you one example or two examples. For example, there is one labor who is working on the farm. Then we must, or farmer must ensure that his children are going to school. He lives in a house which is well ventilated, well aerated. It is getting sun. Uh, if his children fall sick, they get hospital, admission in hospital, or they get treatment. Means all sorts of things are to be kept in mind. For example, you may have some drivers, drivers on the tractor or truck driver who will transport your uh, produce then you must ensure that this driver is getting proper salary, proper money, and also he is getting sufficient sleep. So to that extent, we can include our principles of organic farming. Means each one of the people, person, human, animal, plant needs to be happy. Principle of care should be managed in a precautionary and responsible manner. There should not be uh, over exploitation of anything, anybody. Now see the world of organic agriculture 2021. This data uh, suggests what is the status of organic agriculture uh, in the current season, current time. So you can see countries with organic activities. In 2019, there were 187 countries. Organic agricultural land. In 2019, in the world, there was 72.3 million hectares land which was 11 million hectares, just 11 million hectares in 1999. But it has rose to 72.3 million hectares in, uh, in 2019. Organic share of total agricultural land is just 1.5%. And wild collection and further non-agricultural areas, 35.1 uh, million hectares. And producers, uh, producers are 3.1 million producers in the world. But India has a distinction that India has highest number of farmer, highest number of uh, people associated with organic farming or organic production. The great number, about 13 lakhs farmers are involved in India in organic farming. The next best is by Uganda and then Ethiopia. So far organic market is con concerned there is 106.4 billion euros organic market in the world. And U.S. leads the, the tally, which has 44.7 billion euros market. And next is Germany, 12 billion euros, and France, 11.3 billion euros. And so far, area is concerned. In area, Australia has the highest area in organic farming, about 35.7 million hectare, which is a big area. The next country is Argentina, having 3.7 million hectare area. And so far, uh, or, uh, per capita consumption is concerned. Denmark has the highest per capita consumption of 344 euros. And number of countries with organic regulations means certification 
it is about 108 countries. So, the purpose of showing this uh, data is to have some idea that how this organic farming is progressing in the world with respect to area, production, consumption, etc. Now, see the position of India, data on certified organic production in India and just you see uh, data on total production uh, in million tons. So, we started with 1.24 in 2013-14 and now it has gone to 2.75 in 2019-20. However, in 2020 the area and production has increased further. Total area in certification million hectare, it is in 2019-20 it is 3.76 million hectare which is very big area. And then total area under certified organic cultivation is 2.3. So, this is your cultivated area which is ploughed and then total area under certified wild harvest it is 1.37. So, you can also see in the table uh, below the table the latest data for 2020-21. So, you can see here 4.33 million hectare is the area total area in India out of which 2.65 million hectare is cultivated area and 1.68 million hectare for wild harvest collection. So, students can remember such kind of data or figure because sometimes they are asked from you. Now, we see what, what are the important components of organic farming or pillars of organic farming. So, dear students there are four major pillars of organic farming, organic standards, certification or regulatory mechanism, technology packages and market network. So, you need to learn all these four aspects. Anybody whether it is farmer, whether it is student, anyone has interest in organic farming, he or she should know these four things in detail. So, let us see organic program in the country. Organic standards and certification is the responsibility of the national program on organic production. So, let us see when government of India started national program on organic production. In modern time or in recent time how we started organic farming in India, let us see some issues, some agencies, some little bit of history. So, the program on national uh, organic production was launched during 2001 and it was internationally recognized and it is equivalent to the European Union and Switzerland, our standards and USDA recognized conformity assessment system. Equivalence with Canada, Japan, South Korea and Taiwan expected soon we will have equivalence with them, uh, we are negotiating and 28 accredited certification bodies, 10 in public sector and 18 in private sector. So, this number keeps on changing of, to update yourself you can see website of APIDA where you can up, update these number and name of agencies because they normally change every year or every two years. And this national program on organic production is basically operated by agricultural and APIDA, uh, agricultural and processed food product export development authority, APIDA. It is part of Ministry of Commerce, Government of India. So, students should remember the full form of APIDA, it is usually asked. And then what is offered by this agency APIDA in certification, because it is also making our standards. First responsibility of APIDA is uh, making standard and second is certification, arranging the certification of organic products. So, in certification it offers crop production, wild harvest collection, livestock and sericulture, apiculture, aquaculture, food processing, animal feed processing. So, these are the major areas where APIDA offers certification. So, again you can update yourself because in list you can find some more names. Now, see what is standard, let us learn uh, standards in detail, organic standards, what do we mean by standard and why we need them. So, we do production, uh, production means when we produce organic crop and in that we follow some standards during the growing of or production or processing of that products, we follow certain do's and don'ts and these are your standards. Standards are and certification is also done at processing stage. Sometimes you want to have value addition, you have sugar cane juice, you want to make gur or sugar, then you need some, some standards, you need some certification of this. 
So, you have a standard for value addition also. Even there are standard for packaging, what packaging items should I use, what should be the procedure for packaging. For this also certain standards are to be followed. You can do something, you cannot do something that is your standard. Then marketing some input products, some inputs like manures are used, some biopesticides are used. For that case also certain standards or specification are followed. So, you can see at all the st stages of organic production, processing, packaging, marketing, you need to follow certain standards. So, now see what is standards. So, these are the do's and don'ts in organic farming. What is allowed and what is not allowed. Certain guidelines are officially laid down in document that guides the production, processing and other aspects of organic products. What are the rules for conversion from conventional farming to organic farming? So, these rules or guidelines are also given, they are given in writing in the standards. Uh, what methods and materials should be used in crop production? So, such materials are already listed, the list is given, the names are given, this can be used, this cannot be used. All these things are mentioned in organic standards. So, Indian organic standards have been developed by APIDA and are available on the website. Anybody interested can go to APIDA website, in that you just click on organic products and there you will find all kind of information related to organic products in, in India. Now, what are the major uh, organic standards in crop production? You are producing crops. So, crop production plan, uh, conversion requirements are mentioned. Duration of conversion period, normally it is 2 years for annual crops and 3 years for perennial crops and landscape, choice of crops and varieties, what kind of varieties or crops should be chosen, such guidelines are given, how to maintain the diversity in crop production and management plan, nutrient management, means uh, practices of nutrient management, what can be done, uh, contamination control, uh, control of pest, disease and weeds soil and water conservation uh, schemes or measures are given suggested and collection of non cultivated material of plant origin or forest products. Now, how to maintain diversity in crop production and management plan? This is just one example I am giving to you uh, how the standards are given. So, these are the standard for increasing the diversity in crop production and management plan. So, consider the structure and fertility of soil and surrounding ecosystem to minimizing nutrient losses. Organic farm shall maintain sufficient diversity by considering pressure from insects, weeds, diseases while maintaining or increasing the soil, soil organic matter, fertility, microbial activity and general soil health. Soil fertility maintained by legumes, deep rooted plants and green manures, crop rotations and fertilization with the organic inputs. So, these guidelines are written guidelines given in the document of standards with respect to diversity in crop production. Now, in organic uh, farming the crop rotations are very very important and see crop rotations can influence can affect the productivity, crop nutrition and soil health, environmental protection, insect pest, weed disease management and economics means uh, we need to follow crop rotation, we need to follow diversification of the crops and coping system if we want to succeed in organic farming. So, definitely if you rotate the crop, if we have intercropping system, our productivity of the crops increases and also if we include legume crops in the rotations, soil health improves and nitrogen and nutrients are made available to the next crop and then environmental protection because you are required to use no any chemicals or pesticide. Therefore, environment is protected and it helps in increasing the organic matter in the soil. If organic matter in the soil increases, that means your water holding capacity of the soil will increase. So, less losses of water, water less losses of soil and suppose I can give you with one example, under organic system, if it is continuing for many years then instead of 5 irrigation, 4 irrigation will be enough. What I mean to say here is that irrigation number will reduce. 
if your organic matter content increases in the soil. Economics by adopting uh, crop rotations, diversification, uh, it becomes more economic and more remunerative. Now, second aspect uh, is your certification. Uh, in this case, what is certification? It is a procedure by which the accredited certification body by way of a scope certificate assures that the production or processing system of the operator has been methodically assessed and conforms to the specified requirement as envisaged in the NPOP. So, this is a quite complicated def uh, definition of certification. I can simplify it. Certification is required because how a consumer will believe that this product has been produced under organic conditions. He needs some proof. He needs some certificate. Then who will give the certificate? Certificate will be provided by the certification. Now, question comes how the certification can be done? How a agency can certify that uh, this particular farmer has produced organic food? Then the government has already laid down standards. Okay, if farmer is doing organic farming, he must follow these organic standards. Now, who will verify? Who will do inspection of these standards, whether they have been adopted by farmers or not? It is just kind of check and balance. So, therefore, certification agency will ensure that I will regularly meet the farmer, I will go there, I will do inspection and I will ensure that food organic production is done under set organic standard. And in the end, if certification agency is satisfied, then it will give a certificate. Then consumer is happy and certification agency is also happy because they charge, they charge some money for certification. Normally in India, they charge about 40 to 50,000 rupees per acre for certification. And it is of course a huge uh, amount and this is known as third party certification. I will come later to this subject. So, all the steps in food production or processing to packaging uh, storage are certified. The requirement of certification may vary from one nation to another nation. Now, you see certification just I introduced you to it third party certification. Why it is called third party certification? Because uh, the farmer is the first, first party who is producing it and consumer is the second party who is using it and the certification agency is the third party who is certifying it. So, therefore, it is third party certification under national program for organic production and it is mandatory for export. If you want to export your organic product to other countries, then it must be certified by the certification agency by the third party certification which is implemented by APIDA. Now, another kind of certification system is there because farmers cannot bear this expensive cost. So, government of India started in 2016, July 2016 they started another program which is known as participatory guarantee system PGS and PGS system is free of charge. Here farmer is not required to pay any money and it is being operated by a, a National Center of Organic Farming NCOF which has seven or eight regional station in different part of the country and they are coordinating the job of certification through participatory guarantee system. Now, you see the differences in NPOP and PGS. These are the certification system in India and there is no any third or fourth certification. Only two kind of certification systems are there in the country NPOP and PGS. See the differences. NPOP is based on national uh, standards and it is also based on national organic standard under both same standards are there. Exhaustive documentation and third party verification in NPOP it is quite exhaustive and complicated and PGS is very simple and regional counselor is the facilitator. Procedures are widely accepted in case of NPOP that is the advantage and here they are not accepted widely. Still many consumers are doubtful of PGS. Cost intensive as I told it is very costly very expensive this NPOP system. However, PGS is low cost system. Uh, NPOP is applicable for individuals, grower groups and processing facilities and PGS is applicable only to grower groups means farmers have to come many farmers have to 
come make their group or follow the clusters. Emerging regulatory scenario, now what happened even then certification is there, still consumers are not happy. So government come, came to the rescue of the consumers and some new regulatory scenario has emerged in the country that is there. So now this FSSI has come into picture and you can see the any organic food manufactured, packaged, sold, offered for sale, marketed or otherwise distributed in the country is regulated as per the provisions of Food Safety and Standard Regulation 2017 which were notified on 29 December 2017 and enforced from 1st July 2018. Now it has become legally means some legality has been given by FSSI. So these regulations require organic food to comply with the provisions of National Program for Organic Production or PGS means this uh, the, they will get a license no license from FSSI only when you, your product has been certified by third party certification NPOP or PGS system. However, to support a small original organic producer or producer organization, those with annual turnover not exceeding 12 lakhs per annum have been exempted from certification through NPOP or PGS. So this is the advantage. So many times what happens that they go to product is certified and uh, consumer is not happy and they sell it in the market that this is organic product. Many times uh, people even do not go for any certification and they package it and sell it in the market and then they claim this is organic product. So such people can be caught by the law now. Now we have some laws. However, such kind of condition is not applicable to the farmer who are having income of rupees 12 lakh, maximum of rupees 12 lakh per year. They can, if they like, they can sell their product as organically produced product. The organic foods uh, covered through these regulations should bear FSSAI organic logo, that is Javik Bharat logo along with the PGS organic or India organic logo. So you can see this logo with every organic product which is sold in the market now should have this logo. If this logo is not there, please do not buy your product, organic products. So the consumer shall look for food safety and standard authority of India's organic logo. Javik Bharat should be there. And also license number is also written. And now general requirement for certification of organic products. Uh, here you need to avoid the synthetic chemicals. They should not be used and use of the land that has been free from chemicals for number of years. A strict physical separation of organic and non-certified products and in processing exclusion of all chemicals. Many times certain pre preservatives are used which are chemicals in nature. They should never be used. Keeping detailed written production and sales record, undergoing periodic on-site inspections. Now, organic farming has a very good scope and opportunities in India. India has diverse geography and climatic conditions, great potential to increase area under organic farming, particularly in rain-fed and dried land areas, which are already there, means which are organic there already by default. Research and extension education, lot of opportunities, huge potential in export and domestic market. It is required to be exploited and there is very high growth in domestic uh, market of organic products. Employment in producing and marketing the organic seed, organic manure, so lot of employment opportunities are there in organic farming because it is a new area or emerging area in the country. There are a lot of job opportunities uh, for in organic farming because we are diverse uh, ecology and we have rain fed, dry land, variety of landscape. Huge potential is seen in export and marketing of organic inputs and output. The, the people who are running away to the cities, migrating, they can adopt organic farming in rural areas. Now there are many examples where well-to-do engineers, doctors, they are going back to roots, going to villages and they are starting organic farming. Employment is possible through organic seed production. Raw materials obtained from organic farming can be transformed into Value addition, value addition can be done or some employment in marketing of organic products, inputs, 
lot of chances are there. And in scope also you can see this uh, many parts of the India which are green or blue. They are already organic, very little use of pesticides and uh, fertilizers. So these areas can be converted. So major three, three areas are there where organic farming can be implemented in phases. First higher states are Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Meghalaya, Mizoram. And there are second tire state. In the first tire state, straight way one can start the organic farming. And in the second tire states, here some selected areas can be chosen that can be converted to organic farming, Assam, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Bihar, etc. And there may be some areas like uh, towards organic farming approach, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, AP, West Bengal, UP, Punjab, Haryana. Here nobody is recommending that you go for uh, organic farming everywhere. In selected area, India can opt for organic farming. And this is also policy of the government. And some crops have been identified for areas. For example, for rain-fed region of MP, Karnataka, you can go for soybean. For hill region of Himachal, turmeric, ginger, cauliflower. Tribal area of Jharkhand, rice, durum wheat. Irrigated region of Punjab, basmati rice, Kerala, maybe black pepper. And rain-fed region of Gujarat, maybe cotton. So, government has almost identified the crops for organic farming. And the fourth and most important aspect is marketing ne network. You have produced the organic uh, produce, but now you sell it. So intelligent salesmen can earn good money and a poor salesman can earn poor money. So you need to, be, have, need to have intelligence to sell yourself, to sell your product. So this emergent demand of, for organic agriculture products is both a constant as well as the opportunity. So you can see why a consumer should buy an organic product and why a consumer should not buy organic product. So let us see what are the attributes that people uh, consider while buying the organic products. So first they think that health, organic food will give them good health, it will be good for environment, organic food are tasty, animal welfare happens and minimum processing, novelty and some people eat in fashion. So these are the preferences of consumer. But there are people who don't want to buy organic products because of high price, limited availability, skepticism, poor appearance, and known awareness of organic, uh, organic farming and contentment with the existing products. Let us see promotion of input market. Because in organic production, we have two kind of things. One is input, other is output. So marketing is done for both. So let us first see promotion of input market. Variety of inputs are there, biofertilizers, biopesticides, manures, and so on. So central government is promoting the production and use of biofertilizers to make it popular. Government has initiated a project, national project on development and use of biofertilizers for this purpose. Main objective of this project are production and distribution of biofertilizers, developing standards for different uh, biofertilizers and quality control, releasing of grants for setting up biofertilizer units, and training and publicity. But there are challenges in marketing of organic inputs, major problems that hinder the growth of marketing of organic product in India. Some climatic regions or soils are not suitable for organic production. Use of only biofertilizer and biopesticides will be considered as less yielding or less rewarding compared to the chemical fertilizers. Some biofertilizers stains have limited shelf life. About three years are required for a conventional farm to become an organic farm. Challenges in uh, marketing of organic inputs continues. Agricultural research institutions or extension services are mostly oriented towards chemical input agriculture. Thus, requirement for reorienting these institutions towards organic agriculture, which is not possible. Many institutes have started taking interest in, on research and teaching of organic agriculture. Changing the cropping and cultivation pattern is slow and time-consuming process given the high levels of illiteracy and large number of small and marginal farmers. Subsidies on chemical fertilizers and pesticides slow down the growth of organic agriculture. In India, we get some subsidies on chemical fertilizers. 
Now, organic produce market. Produce here means output. Whatever you have produced, whether raw form or whether value-added or packaged form, it is related to that. Expanding continuously, but at slow pace in India. Some farmers are selling their organic products directly to the consumer. There are a number of models, and most of the marketing of organic products is not very well organized. There are certain limitations in the expansion of organic markets. So, limitations in the expansion of organic markets, lack of information about organic market, and most of the time, farmers do not get information of the market in time. Marketing network specifically for organic products has not yet developed both in the domestic as well as export market. So, it is uh, really uh, a kind of limitation for the farmers. Quality of Indian food industry is always a constraint for growth, low consistency of quality and contamination in food products is a setback in capturing the available market, especially the internet, international market. So, many times some spurious things are sold in the market and that really uh, a shame many times. High levels of transaction cost for getting farm certified as organic product is also unaffordable for small farmers. Limited interest of the government, though the activity